Hi, everybody, and welcome back to yet another cracking edition of the Matt Brown Show. In this particular episode, we're going to be chatting to Dale Thomas. Uh, he is the number one Amazon best-selling author of an incredible book all about AI for small businesses and any kind of business leader or entrepreneur that's just trying to really understand, well, what are the real applications of AI? How can I use AI to better my business, better my processes, and ultimately become a better leader? Dale, welcome to the show. Well, thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Perfect, man. So uh, give us a quick elevator pitch uh, about you and Actionable <clears throat> Labs, et cetera. Um, what exactly are you guys up to? So Actionable Ops is a, it's an AI consulting company, which we've pivoted within the last year to uh, all AI. Uh, we were doing a lot of operational consulting before, but the more we got invested with our own AI implementation, the more we saw there was a lot of value with working with small businesses and medium-sized businesses with their, with their uh, AI programs. Okay, perfect. So uh, what inspired you to write the ultimate guide to artificial intelligence for small business success? Obviously, it's become a bestseller, but what was the backstory to it? Honestly, I don't consider myself much of a, a writer, uh, but I was on vacation about six months ago. And as I was there, I was playing with my chat bot and it was, we were in Turks and Caicos and just relaxing. And I started playing around. Well, if I were to write a book, what would the framework be? And I was honest in my book on how I used AI. And part of it was uh, building the framework around the chapters. So I put into my chat bot that I use, what would a uh, framework be or what would the uh, chapters look like if we were to put together a book on AI? And as I was spitting this out, I, I realized that I actually knew a lot more than I gave, gave myself credit for. So I started putting down some of my ideas and those ideas kind of just uh, kind of snowballed from there. Next thing I had the first chapter done and, and, uh, and the rest was, as I say, history. Yeah, perfect stuff. So in your book, you do uh, discuss the advantages and disadvantages <clears throat> of using AI in business. Could you elaborate on some of the significant benefits and some of the common pitfalls small businesses should be aware of? Absolutely. I mean, some of the biggest benefits are it's such a powerful tool that can help uh, enhance business operations and, and drive innovation. It can certainly help with... Uh, everyday tasks to doing a lot of the heavy lifting around analytics. Um, the, the amount of, of benefits that it can have are just, just tremendous. As far as you know, some of the pitfalls, the, the biggest pitfalls I see right now in this space are some of the ethical uh, considerations and the responsible use of AI and making sure that businesses, when they're starting to roll out, uh, AI programs to their to their employees that they're really paying attention to the policies, the governance, um, how they're rolling it out, which systems and tools that you that they're using, what type of data and the data privacy with your customer data you're going to be putting into these different tools and these different models that are available. Mm -hmm. um, you got to make sure that that you are doing it in, in a very responsible and ethical way. What does that mean, a responsible and ethical way? Is it, is it, is, does it mean that it's about the, using AI for the benefits of others? Or what does it mean when we talk about ethical use of AI? So when I think of uh, ethical use, it's how do we want to use AI? What's, how are we using it? Um, how do we want our employees to use it? Are we using it for the greater good? Are we using it? It's kind of from like a, a moral perspective, or are we using it to do a lot of bad things? From that, the more practical application of it is from that responsible AI approach, and that's where a lot of the policy and governance uh, roll up into. It's how are we really using this AI? Um, are we providing the transparency to folks to um, the knowledge to our employees or the training to our employees? Um, and making sure that we're, we're using AI just in a, a responsible way. Okay. So uh, I suppose misconceptions are really important <clears throat> to bring into the story here. So one of the common misconceptions that I've heard about is that AI, you know, if I implement AI into my business, uh, it's going to have an impact on my team, right? In other words, I might automate a process. I might be able to unlock some kind of economy of scale, or I might be able to replace an employee with um, with AI. So how do you reassure small business owners um, who are worried about the impact of AI on employment? 
AI is definitely going to replace some of the some of the jobs out there, some of the lower um, skill set jobs, telemarketing, some sales jobs, some data entry. So it's, there's definitely that concern, but it's also going to open up a lot of doors in in some of the higher skilled jobs. And that's one thing I think employers really just need to be aware of. It's it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just kind of a shift in resources and how some of the employees will need to do a lot of skill transferring to maybe upskill and learn learn new skills for the employer. So it's definitely not a bad thing. So it's more about efficiency, right? So it's about keeping that same person, but actually using AI to get that person to become more productive and efficient. Absolutely. Uh, and most businesses are going to have to adapt to some kind of uh, AI usage, I, I really think that businesses will either have to embrace AI or get left behind by their, their com uh, competition. Mm. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. So let's talk about some practical uh, use cases here. So uh, could you share some real world examples of how AI, and you share some in your book, of course, uh, but how uh, AI has significantly improved business productivity, <coughs> operations, efficiency, things like that? Sure. Um, you know, a lot of the areas that I see AI being used, and I kind of specialize in Gen AI. There's a lot of different types of AIs, um, AI different tools, Vision AI and, and Gen AI, and I, I specialize in, in Gen AI. So some of the applications would be around uh, AI-assisted customer service, whether you're providing a chatbot to your employees or whether they have a a chatbot on your on your website for your customers to be able to interact with uh, with your website on a twenty four by seven basis. There was a customer or a client of mine that they had a, a reduction of sixty percent in response time for the customer queries because they were allowing AI to handle some of that work uh, some of that workload. Um, there will also be a lot of um, usage around content generation and whether the the tools generating new uh, knowledge base articles or images or um, the, whether it's doing data analytics and, and handling forecasting as well. So it covers a, just a wide gamut of use cases. Yeah. One of the things I'm super excited about personally is custom AI agents. So basically having an AI that can you know talk like Matt Brown or talk like a, a customer support agent as an example, and then training that custom agent on its own knowledge base, essentially, mm -hmm. um, that can solve very specific use cases. So in the case of like sales, for instance, someone books a sales meeting, but then they don't arrive. So typically what would happen is you'd then use email, right, to then, or maybe some, a sales person, an actual human, would then pick up the phone and try and get you know Dale to pitch up at the sales meeting again. And so with a custom AI agent, that AI agent can automatically just phone uh, that prospect and go, "Hey, you know, you didn't you didn't attend the meeting. Uh, you know, uh, when would you like to uh, reschedule?" And it can actually have a conversation that's integrated with um, with my calendar, as an example. And and, and you know, it could be Dale, are you available at 10 p.m. Eastern on Thursday? And Dale would go, "No." I'm not, but I am available at four. And then the AI agent's like, fantastic, no problem. I will then, you know, book the, the follow-up meeting. So that's an example of instead of having a salesperson waste time doing it, the AI, mm -hmm. the custom AI agent can actually accelerate that, uh, that pipeline um, without having to have someone do that themselves. However, you're still keeping the salesperson in the business, aren't you? Uh, it's just that you're using AI as a small business to accelerate uh, the efficiency of your of your business. Absolutely, and and AI and Gen AI is going to be, and some of the automation that you could do can certainly um, handle a lot of that heavy lifting as far as doing a lot of that task management. And you know, to your point, reaching out to your uh, prospect who hasn't shown up for the call or sending different types of emails. And that's one of, I think, the great things uh, with AI is the the amount of customization it can do when you're trying to contact that um, that prospect, whether you're sending the custom emails or maybe it's a custom landing page for them or, or uh, the custom um, um, phone calls to that prospect. Mm -hmm. So... Obviously, GPT. Uh, a lot of pe most people these days have had some exposure to GPT. Um, so, mm -hmm. in the context of AI, it's so holistically 
impactful across all areas of a business sales like we just touched on marketing being another one like generating a press release as an example um, and so the question then becomes like where do you start with all of this so if you're a small business owner doing you know 500k a year or a million a year um, where do you uh, start like how do you what's the the best place to start implementing um, ai technologies effectively Sure. I think for most businesses, they really need to start familiarizing them, uh, themselves with how AI can enhance the business operations and, and really kind of the problems that they're trying to solve um, and what AI can do around driving innovation and improving efficiencies. Um, you know, again, taking a look at what their business needs are before um, implementing AI, evaluate their current processes and identify areas that could really benefit from automation um, or enhanced decision making. Those are the best places that um, I would start. And then also making sure that they can understand the ethical, impl uh, ethical imp implications of AI um, and understanding whether they want to use a system like ChatGPT where you may not want to provide it your customer data. Um, you, want to may, you may want to use a more private um, type of bot, uh, bot like TextCorp, excuse me, Text Cortex. Um, where when you're interacting with the, the, the GPT, it's not training the model and giving it your customer data. Mm. Um, from there, you consider who you have on board that has that technical expertise or that expertise within implementing AI systems. There's a lot of resources out there online or, you know, my book uh, um, that you can leverage to kind of help build that road, roadmap to a, sex, a successful implementation. Mm -hmm. So Dale, your book mentions you, uh, various AI tools and platforms. You just mentioned another one now. Which tools over and above GPT, as an example, do you personally recommend for small businesses and why? So I personally rarely use like ChatGPT, mainly because um, I don't want it training on any of the data that I provide it. I work with a, an implementation partner with TextCortex, who I just mentioned, which is a complete uh, co-pilot system for your for your business. They're based in Germany, so they it's a more secure environment. They have the GDPR, plus Germany also has its own privacy uh, regulations. They have multiple models, so they have all the uh, GPT, but they also have Claude as well. And they're they brought on Llama, and hopefully they will um, continue to add different models for you to interact with. The, the tool can connect to Zapier, so it ex expands on your uh, in integration opportunities. Um, it'll do image creation through um, Stable Diffusion or Dolly. And then it also has what I, and, and one of the main reasons I went there initially was um, you can create a knowledge base. So if, if you have a, all your customers go into their individual knowledge bases. So when you sync your data from Google Drive or, or OneDrive, over to the knowledge base. Now you're interacting specifically with that customer information, or maybe it's an employee handbook or an H, uh, like HR policies. You can in, now interact specifically with that knowledge base, which is something I don't see a lot of other platforms having. Mm. So for me, it's mainly text cortex. I, I try a lot of different AI tools out there. Um, that's the that's my daily driver. But we do use some other AI video tools and and. Um, uh, tools to record our meetings. I use Nuda and I've uh, been using Nuda for a long time where, it'll, where it'll, it will record our meetings and it's kind of like Fly, Firefly and I forget some of the other popular tools out there. Um, give me a transcription of the meeting and then summarize it and give me the action items and um, some of the different points about the meeting. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned, uh, you know, data privacy has come up a couple of times here. So if you're, if you're a small business owner and you are training a, an AI or building your own custom agents as an example, and you're taking knowledge base as an example, uh, or maybe even some customer data, and you're loading that into the knowledge base, I think that raises some specific concerns around data privacy. So with the increasing use of AI, especially in the world of business, um, how do you leverage AI responsibly given the importance of things like data privacy? Sure. So you, you want to make sure that you incorporate like privacy and data protection uh, considerations uh, into the decision to um, leverage these, these different platforms. Um, 
you need to make sure that you're considering it's uh, like the five stages of uh, the privacy life cycle. So the collection of the data, the aggregation of it, um, the analysis and storage um, use, and then the deletion of the data where you're paying special attention to the storage and um, how those large data sets are used for machine learning and how they be become a security risk. You have to have um, a lot of privacy around how your employees are interacting with those models and exactly what you're you're providing it. Mm -hmm. um, so when you and then when you're engaging with your stakeholders, um, uh, you want to make sure that you're specifying those privacy related values, uh, what those frameworks are, and the attributes through uh, the engagement with the users and the uh, potentially impacted groups. Mm -hmm. So let's quickly talk about integration here. So let's take like a cold email system. Uh, like instantly.ai or maybe buzz.ai, which does LinkedIn automation or what have you. So there are these sort of pre-built AI enabled tools that are available to any entrepreneur, small business. And so when one looks at integrating an AI platform, like instantly as an example, or buzz, whatever it might be, um, what are some of the common challenges that you see, or what's your advice around integration uh, of these, uh, you know, tools into the business? Cause it's not just about the tool itself. It's actually, well, there's a process impact, there's a resource impact, there might be a data impact, there might be a Zapier integration impact or whatever. So integration can actually become something that's uh, complex um, and that impacts the business. And so right. when it comes to integration, um, what is your advice to an entrepreneur or a small business uh, around integrating AI tools into their operations? I would say, you know, begin with the end, end in mind. What are you trying to achieve um, through that automation? And don't just start doing automation to, to do automation because you can go down a rabbit hole of spending all your days and times configuring different uh, automations for your different processes. And then you always have to go back and and there's always a tool that's going to break, whether it's Zapier has up, uh, updated something or the third party platform has updated their APIs. So you, you need to make sure you can understand what those end-to-end -end workflows are. So when things do break, you know which system it broke in um, and then kind of know how to, how to resolve it. Everybody has some kind of automation right now, especially with tools like Zapier and, and you can uh, integrate tens of thousands of, of tools and you can spend tremendous amounts of time trying to figure out different automation workflows. And it's a rabbit hole that I've gone down many times. And I like to try to keep it s simple. If if I don't 100% need that uh, automation, I don't use it. Uh, and so that's the main thing I try to you know talk to businesses about. If you need it, use it. But if you can avoid it, avoid it. Because there's also the tribal knowledge of who put the workplace or um, the automation together. Are, are they the only ones that know how to do it? And then what happens when they, if they win the lottery and are no longer at the company, who's going to maintain those automations? So it's always something to uh, keep in mind. Mm. Yeah. So in your book, you talk about customer service um, operations or specifically using AI to support customer service operations. So can you share how AI uh, does this exactly? Um, and what are some of the customer service uh, opportunities that small businesses can unlock by working with AI? So from a customer service uh, perspective, you've already touched on several of it, uh, several items where you can create automated emails that go out to customers that maybe respond to customers in a specific way, uh, creating these conversational AI assistants, these chatbots that are on your website where the customers can inter interact directly with these chatbots, um, where they can provide product information or handle routine tasks. And I know that um, like McDonald's recently got a, are, are moving away from their voice AI within their drive through But to me, that was an amazing example of, of handling some customer service through AI, where I was, I was a big fan of the um, voice uh, AI that they were using because I thought it was tremendously accurate despite the, why they're sunsetting that program. Um, you know, these tools that handle customer service uh, inquiries handle it faster. It's 24 by 7, which reduces the strain on the support teams. Um, modern AI systems can understand uh, context and nuance and uh, provide personalized, empathetic responses to folks. So, and again, it can provide these automated, personalized uh, documentations 
for very specific use cases for the customer. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's to me, it's, you know, that's one of the number one things that I would advise businesses on is start with customer service or start with, with HR and figure out how can you improve the employee experience or the customer experience with a basic um, Gen AI integration. Mm. Yeah. I want to quickly change gears and talk about uh, financial management for small businesses, because I think oftentimes, especially as founders, entrepreneurs, we're great at like, you know, building the business and, you know, doing sales, marketing, product development, what have you. But then when it comes to finance, it's kind of like you're a bit, uh, you're not exactly on top of things. You know, it's the thing, this is a thing right. you do once a month. It's not a thing. <laughs> it's not a thing that you do as a sort of a, a strategic advantage. So when it comes to financial management and AI, um, how can AI assist small business owners in managing their finances more efficiently and accurately? Sure. Well, more more tools, whether it's QuickBooks or or Zoho Books, are already in great, integrating their own AI tools into the platform, uh, which just make things easier, which will allow you to automate the creation of those financial reports or invoices or some of the other documents. Um, the thing that I really love about AI with, with finances is, is the, the forecasting capabilities that it can do and some of the predictions um, that it has, especially when you're taking a look and doing um, data analysis and insights where you can have multiple different um, data sources. And that's really what turned on uh, the light bulb for me about a year and a half ago when I was taking a look at how you could connect different data sources to, uh, it was at the time ChatGPT's data analytics or data analysis tool, and you could feed it different um, revenue reports or expense reports, uh, and it starts helping you paint that picture and finds that needle in the haystack that you may not have been able to find if you were just looking at your PL or your expense report. Which to me, that was a complete game changer on some of the power within uh, the financial management opportunities in AI, uh, especially when these tools are starting to use a lot more natural language communication and you don't have to be a SQL guru. You can just tell it what you need and it just knows um, how to get you that information or, or what information you're looking for. Yeah. I want to change gears quickly. Talk about marketing. Yeah. So you mentioned you spend a lot of time in Gen AI, et cetera. Uh, GPT, fantastic at gen or generating, you know, social media content calendars or whatever. Um, in the context of marketing over and above, like what you can do within the GPT space, et cetera, write an article, write post copy, et cetera. You know, what are some of the things that you see in the marketing space in terms of how business owners or small businesses are using AI to accelerate the impact of their marketing? Sure. You know, for the most part, the biggest thing that I'm seeing people use uh, the Gen AI for in marketing is the content creation, uh, where it can create, whether it's unique uh, um, marketing assets or images or, or text or designs, which it, for a small business, I totally see the value of, of why they'd want to do that. Of course, I think they need to uh, understand that a lot of people can see and, and tell a Gen AI created content. So they have to be careful how they use it and make sure that there's always human oversight when they are creating, whether it's a LinkedIn post or a, um, a, a Facebook post with Gen AI content. There's, there's people that definitely don't want to see a lot of this new Gen AI created stuff. Though Google has come out and said that they don't care whether it's Gen AI or not, as long as it provides value. So if you're creating your web pages using Gen AI, that's a good use case for some when you're trying to market your website, market your product via your website. Um, of course, you can use it for this, a lot of the uh, data-driven uh, analytics that you can do, whether it's... I don't use Facebook or, or Google uh, um, ad, uh, AdWords, um, but you, you can start sucking in that data and start uh, really understanding your business and uncover a lot of the valuable insights with your, your business to better understand um, how your marketing spend and, and how you're, you're, you are doing marketing on your products. Mm -hmm. So what does the future look like then? I mean, obviously, everyone's been GPT crazy for the last sort of two years. Um, but what I'm starting to see is that AI is really evolving. Like so there's specific use cases. Um, and, and while the technology might not be perfect, like even with the generation of avatars, 
you know, Matt Brown AI and, you know, there's an AI Matt Brown. <laughs> it's not perfect, right. uh, but it's certainly evolving. So that obviously begs the question then, well, how do you see, you know, a, the space of AI uh, evolving over the next sort of five years, uh, especially for small businesses? That's that's a really good question because it's evolving so fast, and it, some of the the new things that are coming out are just mind blowing. That it's going to be really hard to tell what five years looks like mm. um, with with a lot of the like the voice AI uh, and being able to you know we talked about it uh, earlier, whether it's answering your calls, uh, whether it's making those calls for you. Um, small businesses will definitely need to embrace uh, AI technologies to remain competitive. Um, and there's, it was a statistic saying that um, AI is projected to have a, a growth rate of about 37% um, year over year up until it was like uh, 2030. So 85% of businesses are expected to have AI or, uh, in their operations within the next three to five years. So the adoption of AI um, across multiple areas. And again, I, I mainly work with a lot of Gen AI, but there's going to be new AI technologies coming on board that are just going to be, I think, mind blowing. It's a super exciting time to start looking at, uh, looking at this space and how to you know, put AI into your business. Mm. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. It's incredible. Like, it's crazy. Like how I think so many... <laughs> business leaders, whether they're in HR or retail or financial services or whatever, like they just keep doing the same thing the same way. Um, and I think as a small business owner, entrepreneur, if you are thinking differently about, well, how can I actually implement this thing? It's not something mm -hmm. that you're paying lip service to, you know, it's like, well, one day we will, you know, it's like, well, no, <laughs> if you keep, you know, adopting that sort of mindset, then uh, there's not going to be one day for you in the future. Some guy's going to come and eat your lunch because they were like, well, let's implement this now uh, and let's automate this process. Let's replace this resource. Let's become more profitable. Let's be more efficient. Let's drive our sales mm -hmm. pipeline differently to our competition. Let's do our marketing differently to our competition. Let's do hiring, right, differently to our competition. So, yeah, it's super, super exciting, the, the space that we're in and the access that we now have to these tools that can fundamentally transform an entire business. Absolutely. And those, you know, to your point, I think the business leaders and the, uh, the owners need to be open minded when it comes to AI, um, especially around, you know, it's not nearly as expensive to use a, a platform like Text Cortex as it is to to develop your own models internally. So it's it's certainly I find it very cost effective for my business or, or other businesses. So it's, you know, as long as businesses are keeping an open mind and, and open to the opportunity to uh, to leverage AI tools, they can definitely transform their business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's wrap this up, Dale. So why did you write the book and why do you do what you do? Like what gets you out of business or out of bed rather in the morning? Well, I wrote the book because I thought it was an opportunity to do a couple things. One, when I talked to business owners, they were either um, – really smart or really smart and using um, AI already, or they really had a good, a good understanding of it, or they had zero knowledge of it. Um, and what I thought there was an opportunity, one, I wanted to write the book so I could just document my thoughts and ideas. And, and it was really kind of a way to, for me to gauge my knowledge, but it was also a way to help, um, start at the beginning of when I, AI was first created back in the 50s and kind of show people that that pathway forward um, to really give business owners a um, kind of a roadmap on how they could adopt AI. Yeah. Um, the book, it wasn't ever intended to be the end-all be-all prompting guide. It was to give people this this foundation because again, they most people are are thinking when, they, when you say AI, they, they're thinking, Chat GPT and Chat GPT is such a small piece to this entire puzzle and this entire ecosystem that I want to also show showcase to people um, some of the other applications for AI other than just have it create uh, you know your next piece of, of, of marketing uh, material. For me, it's 
if I can spend all day playing with, with AI tools, uh, I'd be a happy camper. I love learning about the, the latest, greatest AI tools that are, are out there that are available. Um, I have to be careful because I will go down that rabbit hole and can spend all day uh, doing that type of type of work. But it's super exciting. It's super fun to play with all this stuff and then be able to make these recommendations to business owners on, on you know, which tool would be the best for their business. I mean, that's that's what so I love. It, so it's really about impact for you, isn't it? Making a difference. Absolutely. Yes. Mm. That's awesome, man. Okay, cool. So where can uh, you know people reach out to you? Obviously, your book is on Amazon. Is that correct? It's on Amazon, yes. Um, it's currently available as uh, on print um, or through the Kindle. Uh, through Kindle. Yeah, so they could visit our website, uh, actionableops.com. Uh, my email is dale, D-A-L-E, at actionableops.com. Superb, man. Well, listen, I think you're in a very incredible and incredibly exciting space. And I think one of the things that I know to be true, having done the show for the last 10 years, is that, you know, uh, leaders like yourself, when they're going into it, not just to make money, but they're going into it to actually make a difference. Those are the ones that actually become successful uh, over time. And so super excited to see where you and the team at Actionable Ops are going to go. And uh, yeah, just wishing you all the very best of the future. Oh, well, thank you. I uh, appreciate that. And again, it was a lot of fun to be here. Perfect. Everybody else, we'll see you again soon.